I'm here backstage at the London EV show with one of our other speakers, Maria Tarabonovska from Flight Crowd. She's one of the co-founders. So, Maria, tell us about Flight Crowd. What do you do? Uh, hi, Abigail. Thank you so much. It's incredible to be here. Okay. Um, well, I'm doing quite a bit on the um, urban air mobility front of things. Okay. And so when I say urban air mobility, people go, what is this about? Well, um, you may know about it from the term air taxis or flying cars. Yes. But really, it's about revolutionary air transportation solutions that are going to come to our life and very much revolutionise the way that we travel, that we commute. Um, and it's about passenger transportation, but also cargo transportation. Um, me specifically in the flight crowd, we're focusing on public engagement side of things. And so um, we see that the industry is developing on a global scale indeed, yeah. and over 500 vehicles are already registered in the VTOL uh, wow. global directory. But how many people do actually know about it? Not many. I didn't know until you just told me. <laughs> Being honest, there I didn't you know. There you go. And so, indeed, it is. It is about engaging with the um, with the end user, but also engaging with people who will be manufacturing, who will be maintaining, who will be operating all these vehicles, but also saying, look, it's not just all about the aircraft. It's about the whole solution. It's about the ecosystem that needs to be built, yeah. the infrastructure, the air traffic management solution that will be innovative. Um, it's about regulations and many, many more. So, it really, is a lot of the parts that need to come together and we see the public the general public who is unaware of, of this world <laughs> existing uh, playing a really key part in this industry's uh, creation um, of course at the moment it's it's at the very early stages well i say early stages again if we have uh, hundreds of companies in, in, involved um, but we will be seeing many many more demonstration flights and we'll be seeing many more um, showcases of the industry's capability and indeed hopefully we'll be seeing many more engagement of the public and really the public trying to see that this is something they want to be involved in this is what flight card is doing saying look you can be involved in it anyone can be i want to be involved in it, it sounds <laughs> great be. i want to be Definitely. involved so when you're saying flight demonstrations mm. is that electric flight demonstrations yes yeah, so wow. um urban air mobility is a an industry that is based on the idea of electric flight sustainable flight very much revolutionizing the way we travel through technology that is digital connected sustainable um we're talking about definitely green operations, in-flight yeah. operations, but also hopefully a green sustain, uh, supply chain as well. Um, a number of vehicles will be providing this service. Um, there is a class of vehicles that is called an eVTOL, or Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Vehicle. I know it's complicated. It uh, is, if you think excited. About, <laughs> what is it? If you think about a hel helicopter, a helicopter is a VTOL, Vertical Takeoff and Landing. Um, an eVTOL, some of them look similar to helicopters, some of them look like drones on steroids, quote from somebody <laughs> who just spoken like to that. earlier. Uh, I can, uh, can visualise But that. indeed it is about that, but very much using the electric power, using the batteries to power the flight, hence providing a sustainable and either quieter and hopefully a safer transportation compared to our, again, the uh, predecessors, so the helicopters that, as we know them, and indeed the general, uh, other general aviation aircraft. Yes, so helicopters, obviously to travel in a helicopter is either like an experience day that you would get bought for a present that's very expensive, or it's kind of how the quite affluent people will travel. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be the future of urban air mobility? Are they wanting to make it so that more people can get involved in that? No, absolutely. I think um, one of the best things I love about the industry is that it's not just about the tourism or sightseeing or the, the air taxi. Yeah. The air taxi is going to be only one of the use cases, one of the applications. Uh, but indeed, we will see the industry uh, delivering policing, aerial firefighting solutions, wow. we'll see transportation of medical aid and medical personnel. It really is going to be something that will hopefully deliver public good on a global scale. Um, and indeed again, Flight Car is, is there to make sure that people will hear and see this industry as not just something that is for the rich, yeah. but also something that is going to revolutionise our lives and the ways we travel. That makes me feel really excited. I just want to share with you, where I live in Yorkshire, mm -hmm. we've got the Yorkshire Air Ambulance, mm -hmm. and it's a helicopter, you may or may not yep. have heard of it, and um, it has a big charity behind it because it's very, very expensive to, to fuel, but it saves lives. It gets in of places course. where cars, motorbikes, and, and people can't because of obviously altitude and things like that. And it's, it's literally life-saving, and it costs so much much to fund yeah. but 
how could the potential um, costs of that be saved by, for example, if it was to be electric? Is there cost saving involved? Absolutely, definitely. So if you think about the current helicopters, um, well, the the petrol, and the maintenance, mm -hmm. um, that costs, well, tons and times more than what uh, availability will require. Oh, wow. It's also about the personnel training. So helicopter pilots um, are very high caliber and there are very, very few of them as well. Very, it's, it's something that really requires a lot of skill, a lot of planning. Not anyone can do it, not anyone can do it anyway as well. Yeah. Um, so really, it's, 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 a, it's a great way of traveling. It's not for everyone. Uh, it's very fast, but urban air mobility will be there presenting a, an alternative solution that is, again, safer in terms of operations. It will be much um, easier to operate the vehicles. Um, again, we're talking about not only using the pilots who are currently working in the aerospace field, but indeed training people in a matter of days, if not hours, uh, to, wow. become, to become a pilot indeed. But also it's about the, um, the parts and how easy it is to maintain them, how easy it is to manufacture them. Um, and yeah, indeed, it's the, the electricity costs um, it is, it is definitely a magnitude going to be a magnitude cheaper than to maintain and run the, the existing helicopter flights. That's why we're not seeing helicopter flights um, in London, for instance, or anywhere else in the, in the UK on a global, on, on, well, on the global scale. But <laughs> I know what you mean, scale. is in like everybody yeah, doing it. Exactly, yeah. exactly, because of how expensive it is. It is expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, urban air mobility, I think it will definitely be important, especially at the start, when not everyone will be able to afford it, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But long term, absolutely, the more people will get into it, the more people will see the true benefit of it, the true potential of it, um, definitely the, the cost will, will start going down and we'll see the wider adoption. That's so really, really exciting. exciting and it could be life-saving. Um, I just want to quickly touch on, um, there's been, I mean, a lot of high-profile, um, sadly, deaths um, yeah. in, 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 in regards to helicopters. We had Kobe Bryant, the basketball player, and I mean, him and his daughter and somebody else and their daughter that was sharing the helicopter with them, you know. I'm sure they're not the only people that it's happened to, but that's a very, very high profile instance where someone passed away because of the, the helicopter issue. So the fact that you're saying that it's going to be safer yeah. and easy to operate is really mind blowing to me. And it, can you just tell me a little bit more about kind of the difference in terms of safety? Yeah, no, definitely. So um, in aerospace, and my background is in aerospace, um, in, in aerospace we definitely never want to compromise safety. Yeah. Safety is our first and foremost priority um, when it comes to transporting lives. Um, safety is, is, is not to be compromised. Um, of course, it's important for us to develop a revolutionary technology, but it has to be safe. At the moment, the safety standards and indeed the, um, the certification processes are not all yet in place. And so we'll see the industry and the um, aviation authorities um, who are still looking into what are the best ways, the best practices and the best um, again ways to um, certify and regulate this industry. But what I can tell you for sure is we definitely have reflected on all the lessons from the past, yeah. uh, from the traditional aviation, general aviation, and we understand that if not meeting at the very least we have to meet the same standards yeah 10 course. to the minus 9 to, to yes, 10, yes. 10 to the 9 um, 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 safety standards um, so here of course again we're talking about multiple redundancy systems mm -hmm. so say for instance if we're talking about multi-copters um, using a number of rotors in a vehicle or your big version of a drone yeah and <laughs> um, then again if, if one um, rotor fails we're looking of how other rotors can still uh, maintain the aircraft oh, in flight. Wow. How can we ensure that if one system fails, there's still so many others that to can, back up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so, so definitely, and indeed, again, that's that's another reason for why helicopters are so expensive. As I was saying, um, just because it's it, it it's enormous skill, enormous complexity yeah. to operate one. To you know, even think about scheduling a, a flight here. Hopefully, we would think in advance in terms of all the potential bad things that could happen yeah. and make sure that if we can do everything um, that we possibly can so that people when they're boarding mm -hmm. they know they're in a safe environment so they'll get somewhere um, you know safely mm -hmm. but also fast and also sustainably. That's really <laughs> exciting like I thought we'd be speaking largely about 
cars and, you know, just d domestic vehicles. But the fact that we're here talking at the London EV show about aviation makes me feel like it's the Jetsons era. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's so exciting. Um, how have you found the show? Are you enjoying it? Absolutely. And again, I think it's it's very interesting uh, meeting colleagues from the electric ground transportation industry. Um, and I certainly see a lot of the overlap and I certainly see a lot of the synergies between the two. Definitely. Um, well, partially because I'm a great believer that this industry, urban mobility, um, I love it, absolutely. But I know that it has to integrate well with the existing and future modes of transport and the built environment to truly succeed, to truly revolutionise the way we travel. Um, and so, you know, going and talking to colleagues, um, I thought it was it was incredible because some of them weren't aware of the industry mm -hmm. and some of them are really seeing how they can expand their existing uh, projects portfolio to really cater for this market. We're talking about the use of the same, well, largely quite a few of the same uh, technologies on board and also to support the vehicle uh, manufacturing and vehicle operations um, that we're already using in the um, electric transportation. So really quite a few... A lot of um, overlap. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In terms of batteries, battery recycling, management, um, again, infrastructure, lessons learned, all of that. But also it really is about saying, look, if we're talking about a new future that is sustainable, that is digital, that is connected, mm -hmm. then again, we all need to work together. We do, so 100%. I, I found it really, really insightful and exciting to be meeting people who are making this future, who are bidding this future, and hopefully bidding the future together. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much Very for sharing so much that with us. It's been really exciting. I'm sure everybody who's watching is really quite excited by the things that you've said, because there are people who are priced out of, you know, flying in a helicopter, things like that. But the fact that it could be potentially and definitely in the future will be something that everybody can be a part of and it's inclusive it's very exciting so thank you so much for sharing that with us and we're looking forward to hearing you speak thank you so much thank, thank you, you thank you